a gift that the behavioral people have given us called functional behavioral assessment and its brother, positive behavioral supports. So why would this student of mine jump out of her seat, run around, and play with the lights? How can I identify the specific behavior? What intervention should I use to resolve it? And how can I integrate that through all stages of the IEP and through life in general? So that calls for conducting a functional behavioral assessment. So I need to look beyond the behavior. So why is she doing this? Socially, affective or emotionally, cognitive issues, environmental issues. I didn't put biomedical issues in there. Well, that should be in there too, biomedical issues. So what am I going to start thinking? All right, Sally. Here's a worksheet. Everybody does one. You do one too. She's out of her seat. So why could that be happening? Well, maybe, maybe it's a cognitive issue. Maybe she's actually really good at math. And she's looked at these 16 problems. She's done them in her head. And they're right. She can't tell you how she did them, but she did them, and they're right. And you know what happens when students are bored. So this work is beneath her abilities. So the, there's a curriculum mismatch. Or maybe this is beyond her cognitive ability. So you've got to watch for that, too. It's important to be careful not to default to she's not attending, she's not doing the work. It's beneath her. Or I should say it's over her ability. And she's not ready for it, but it's important to take a careful look. Or maybe there's a perceptual issue. When she sees 16 problems, She's got a visual perceptual problem, and they all kind of swim together. So maybe now I need to think about giving her some extra pieces of paper to cover up the problems that she's not looking at, or, re, uh, or reprinting the test so there's only one problem per page. So these are some things that I would think about. So that would be in the cognitive domain. What about the environmental domain? Lights. Lights and sounds. Maybe, like so many of us on the spectrum, she perceives fluorescent lights like you would perceive a strobe light. How do I find out? Well, let's see, is she behaving like this in art class? What kind of lights are in art class? So what I'm doing is now I'm triangulating the information, which is just a fancy way of saying I'm checking it out with somebody else. So maybe it's the lights. Maybe I need to make an accommodation of some sort. So that's a possibility. Let's see, could it be something else? Getting back to this sheet of paper. Maybe she's a different type of learner. I give this to everybody. Read the directions, I say. And she doesn't get it. Maybe she's one of those students who comes up to me every time. I don't know how to do this. And I say, read the directions. And it goes back and forth. 